Hey guys, back again really quick for another short video. Um, this video is in a response to a comment I got today um, from Just Screwing Around, uh, who said, yet another mild MLV.app workflow video that eventually leads to another program to finish the editing process. I use it to export something ready to cut with or without LUT from the most basic Magic Lantern camera, the 1100D, maximum resolution, and blah, 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 blah. Um, in response to that, I would say, I said that MLV app is a perfectly good editor, but it's not perfect, and it doesn't do the entire job. It's perfectly fine, like I do this, I do this to just use it for basic edits and call it a day. If it's not something that I really am wanting to get like the perfect edit, I'll let it be the way that it is. But otherwise, or what I get out of MLV app, but if it's something that I want a more advanced grade, I'm gonna take it into DaVinci. And there's that's because MLV app does have some limitations that DaVinci does not have. So here's a piece of footage. This was exported as a cinema DNG um, and put into DaVinci, obviously, DaVinci 16. And here I'm going to edit it um, to show you guys some of the advantages you have uh, going from MLV app to DaVinci and why I would use DaVinci in most in my work if I'm going to get a serious color grade. Okay, so for starters, my first step here is this node um, where I have turned on or changed the color space to the Airy Alexa, like I talked about in the last video, uh, doing that in the MLV app. You can do that if you're gonna export as ProRes, but if you do it as a Cinema DNG, you can't. So here we're just converting it to that color space, um, which is irrelevant, because you can do that in MLV app. Here's the next one. This is just a saturation uh, adjust. You can see how that looks like that. And then before anything, and with, it's a very subtle difference, but it's just enough, I think I, I like it. Um, so that's usually what I'll do initially on most of my edits. Uh, this next one, uh, you'll get one of, this is the one of the, the key, the key reason to use DaVinci Resolve instead of MLV app for color grading. And that's for skin tones, correcting skin tones. In this node here, all I've done is qualify. If I turn it on and hit Shift H, you can see the qualification and we're only seeing his skin tones. You can see in waveform, it tells you where the values are, but that's not where, what we're looking for. We're looking for vector scope. Some of you probably already know where I'm going. With this, we can see this white line, which is the skin tone indicator. If your skin tones are correct, they'll mostly lie lot or fall on this line. But that's not what happen that's not what is happening in this footage. Some of it is going to the red side, and a, quite a lot of it is on the yellow side. This red side would correlate to up here. This is a bit more red, and like in here in his ear is a bit more red. Then this yellow is mainly the rest of his skin, but especially right here where it's getting a green cast from the grass below him. And so while this works, this shot, the way that he looks works, it's not the worst thing in the world, it's definitely not perfect. So in this next node here, I corrected for it. And so you can see two things just happened. A, that cast is gone and his skin tones are more uniform. You don't have that red uh, cast right here if we go back. And we've gotten rid of this cast underneath. And then if you look down here at the vector scope, it's almost uniform right on that line. Just a tad bit on the yellow side, then directly on is how I tend to go. Um, and you can see how it's spread out there. And then we turn it on and bam, it's right on it. Much better looking skin tones. The next node in the line is just a basic contrast. I just brought the shadows up a tad. Here's another example. Here's another perfect example of why you take your footage from MLV app into DaVinci if you're going to do serious color grading. Here we have a node that I've done uh, 
uh, color edits to. All I've done is mess with the hue in this node. But you can already see this dotted line going to it. What I've done is this uh, passes through this qualification to this node and then in this node I go down here to the to the keying and I've inverted it so if we turn this on what you can see is that the background just got all kinds of different the 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 greens look way more green now and like yeah green um, and more saturated and I corrected for the sky now it looks more blue instead of a teal look to it if we turn it back off it kind of looks like teal now it looks blue and then the green the, the, the trees look way more green instead of yellow um, but you can see your skin tones completely untouched and that's because of this passing through if we hit shift H and see what the keying is or what's qualified you can see that it's excluding all of his skin so it's only affecting that. If we were to turn this node off, the skin correction, you can see what happens. It turns off that keying and you can see how that's affected this uh, bit under his chin that was having that cast. Now it's way worse after editing these greens because there were greens underneath his chin. So if we turn that back on, you can see how bam, natural skin tones back into the frame. And so I can edit these colors out here without affecting his skin tones by using this technique. The next two here are for uh, a LUT. I don't usually often use LUTs, but if I do, it's because I kind of like the, the look of a LUT. In particular, I like the Kodak LUT that is built into DaVinci, the um, Kodak 2383. I like the look of that one. So here in these two nodes, this one is just a basic contrast adjust to uh, to correct for what the node for what the LUT does because LUTs tend to be way too strong. So when we adjust for that, you can see, bam, just a little bit just for the kicks. You don't have to have it, but I do. It just kind of gives it that little bit of an edge, kind of like a Kodak look to it a little bit. And then this last very last node is another thing that you cannot do in MLV app and what it is, or at least I'm not aware of, I'm not an MLV app expert, but one thing that you would want to take it into DaVinci to do specifically more advanced things with is uh, get rid of uh, color in your shadows. See how I have the Luma versus saturation. So I put a couple nodes down, do basic uh, curve here and you can see how if we watch with it off there's color in the shadows and when we turn it on it's gone that's uh, kind of gives it a little bit more of a cinematic look I'm not completely sure why not an expert I'm not a colorist I wouldn't be able to tell you the specifics but it does give it a little bit more of that cinematic look that's also very optional it looks totally fine without it like this totally fine I would use this but that's something else that you can do that you cannot do in MLV app. One of the other things that you can do if we just create another node here, besides nodes in general, just right there on its face, nodes. You can't do nodes in uh, MLV app. One other thing is say if I go, I made this new node right here and say I want to qualify so that I'm only editing the shadows. I can easily do that. If we shift H so that we're seeing what's only visible, I can grab this from the highlights and bring it down and keep an eye on it and do something like maybe this. And let's soften the highs so it's not like crazy. We might bring it down just a tad bit more, maybe something in this ballpark. And if we do something like that, let's say then I go back to here, we're gonna turn that so we see what it's normally and say I want to throw some blues into the shadows. I can easily do that, just throwing some blues into the shadows without affecting the highlights, just by doing that. Instead of doing something here with the shadows uh, and getting some spillover into the other uh, tones, I can use this. So I'm gonna lower the soften and bring the high down a little bit more. If we bring that back up, let's do something like right about there and you can see how much that can change it if you want to do very local adjustments like that you can also do that because of how the the qualification works so there's another myriad of reasons why you would want to do your color grade specifically in davinci as opposed to mlv app and this is just a few reasons that uh that i use that are very use that 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 are, are yeah and so I'm not 
against you necessarily, but you have to understand the direct benefits of shooting. You have to you have to understand and and accept the uh, the benefits to editing or to color grading in DaVinci over color grading in MLV app. There are just limitations to MLV app that you can that you can't get past and that's that's a short list of some of them so i'd recommend you to be a little bit more open-minded uh less passive aggressive but more open-minded and give it a try we're not enemies here no one's enemies and i'm just trying to help you out like i'm sure a lot of people are trying to help you out and you're trying maybe in your own way to help me out um so i would just really i would encourage you to give it a try to color grade in davinci there's a there's a pretty steep learning curve but if you practice at it watch some tutorials i'm sure you can get it i have faith in you um but i hope this has helped you guys out and i hope this has helped uh my commenter i forget his name off the top of my head uh just screwing around i hope that that this has helped you as well and i hope you guys have a fantastic day thank you for watching